The Xbox Series S has been revealed, and with it, a lot of answers we've been desperately wanting to know, like price and actual specifications that detail what we can expect when we make our purchase this fall. But who is this console for? Casuals? Gamers who only play Call of Duty or Madden? Let's take some time to see what the impact of having a weaker version to the Xbox Series X will mean for you and for Microsoft. After all, this console was designed and marketed for a certain type of gamer. The question remains, can Xbox sell this product to that audience with this very appealing $299 price tag? Let's discuss that question and many more as we break down the Xbox Series S. Before we get started, please remember to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll get alerted to all the videos and quality Mooch content as it releases. The Series S, previously known as the Xbox Lockhart, was one of the worst kept secrets of all time. Everyone knew it existed, but debated on price and when it would actually be released. Well, those questions have all been answered thanks to a leak by Brad Sams last night. I'll leave the link in the description below so you can read up on it even more after this video. The Series S will be a 1440p ray tracing capable machine that has a 512 gigabyte SSD. It also replicates the Series X look by somewhat capturing the same vertical appearance while looking to be half the size and depth. Almost looks as if the Series X was cut in half. The design is left some wanting more, considering the Xbox One X was a powerful machine that really looks sleek and next generation for its time. The Series S doesn't seem to be getting the same praise in design, but ultimately, it doesn't matter what these consoles look like. The question still remains, how will Xbox market this console? How will they reach the market they intend to without any first-party titles ready for launch? Price point is a powerful position to be in, and Microsoft have themselves in a great spot right now. But consider this for one moment. This generation is like no other. PS4 games will be played on PS5 consoles and PS4 is currently the number one console in the world in terms of sales this past generation. Is Xbox's strategy to bring PlayStation gamers to Xbox with price point alone and a weaker console at that? The Series S will bring ray tracing and other next generation bells and whistles along for the ride, but games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, for example, is targeting 30 FPS, and the next gen upgrades for Cyberpunk 2077 won't be out till next year at some point. What I'm saying is I'm not sure that Xbox's strategy of luring gamers from PlayStation 4 to Series S will work without their first party games lineup. Third party won't take advantage of Series S, Series X, and PS5 until well into 2021. Another talking point I've brought up on social media is depending on the price point of the PlayStation 5 Digital Edition, the Series S may not look so attractive. If the PlayStation 5 Digital Edition comes in at $399, then the $299 price tag isn't so glamorous anymore. After all, we're gamers, right? So isn't content king? Aren't games why we buy these boxes? Xbox seemingly doesn't have any first party games that will be ready anytime soon. So hearing about Game Pass doesn't excite me. I have an Xbox One X that has Game Pass now and can reach 4K on many games and hit 60 frames per second on Call of Duty and other first person shooter style games today. Many are saying that due to the Series S offering ray tracing and faster load times, it will be a coveted item by casual gamers. Most casual gamers don't talk in terms of frame rates and VRS, so I'm not sure if those options are calling out to the casuals as much as resolution. Many have gone out and bought 4K TVs, and they want to utilize those TVs and validate that purchase. The Series S will not be hitting 4K. So I wonder how the casual audience that just bought a 4K TV will take this information. Again, I'm really curious how Xbox will attempt to sell this and to which audience they address. Also, the Series S launches with a miniature 512 gigabyte SSD, which means you'll almost certainly need an external proprietary SSD that Xbox sells for more storage within your first months of usage. Those externals are rumored to be anywhere from $99 to $199 respectively where the Xbox Series X is at one terabyte and the PlayStation 5 comes in just short of that around 825 gigabytes. I'd even agree that both of these are also too small in storage as we enter next generation. But the 512 gigabytes 
is extremely small. It will require you to buy more storage much sooner than the Series X and PS5. The next missing feature generally doesn't matter that much to me personally, but when we are talking about backwards compatibility being such a major part of Xbox's strategy moving forward, I find it interesting that the Series S will not have a disk drive. Yes, I understand it helps drive price down and encourages the use of Xbox's digital store. But with such an emphasis on backwards compatibility and being able to use your physical library of OG Xbox and Xbox 360 games, this console would have benefited from having the disk drive more than the Series X, which is pushing full on next generation capabilities. Again, this is just my opinion and maybe the consumers may not care. I found that to be very interesting to exclude that option. To wrap things up for this video, the Series S is being reported that it will launch November 10th, and I'm truly interested to hear what you all think. Has this official reveal and price point made the Xbox Series S a must have for you this holiday? Or will you wait to see where the PS5 and Xbox Series X price points land and determine whether or not you'll spring for the additional cost for a more powerful option as we enter next generation? Thank you all so much, and please remember to hit that like button as well as the subscribe button on the way out. Also, if you'd like to really help the channel, please consider becoming a Mooch Maniac family member by hitting that join button. We'll catch everybody in the next video. Thank you.